the place of commended blessing. First Kings chapter number 17, I want to read verse from verse number 1. It's a long read, so please I want you to, to follow me as I read. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward, and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Everyone say there. Amen. You can see, God says, I've commanded the ravens to feed you there. So there is a place. Everyone say there is a place. There is a place. Verse number five. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook Cherith. I want you to notice that the man of God went and stayed where? By the brook Cherith. The same place God sent him to. That one said there is a place. There is a place. There is a place. This is important. There is a place. I believe there is a place in the spirit. And I believe there is a place in the natural. There is a place of God's commanded blessing. So he went and stayed by the brook Cherith. Verse number 5. Which flows into the Jordan. Verse 6. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning. And bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while. That the brook dried up. Because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. I won't say there. Okay. So God is giving the man of God specific instructions. And the man of God had to follow God's specific instructions. Very important. It is very important. Come on now, say amen. So he went and he stayed there at Zarephath. See, God says in verse number 9, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Verse 10, so he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So the man of God asked for water and the woman was going to get him water. And he said, also bring me bread. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. <laughs> Only a handful of flour in a bean and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks. I want to say a couple of sticks. A couple of sticks is cup, just two. I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son. That we may eat it and die. This was the last supper for this woman. Okay. This was the woman's last meal. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Everyone say, do not fear. Fear will paralyze you. Don't fear. No room for fear. No room for fear. I, I think I cannot overstate that. No room for fear. There is no room for fear. No matter the report you've got, no room for fear. No, no matter what's happening globally, no room for fear. No, no matter what the doctor told you, no room for fear. No, no matter the predicament you find yourself, no room for fear. You cannot allow that. And that is our responsibility. You know? In actual fact, that is not God's responsibility. That's our responsibility that we don't get into fear. It's our responsibility. And that is one thing the enemy will throw at you. The devil will do it. I mean, the devil will walk over time to get you to get into fear. But you must keep fighting off this devil. You must keep resisting this devil. And if you stand your ground, guess what? This devil is going to back off. Amen. No fear. Tell somebody no fear. no fear. You can't allow fear. I don't care what the doctor said to you. I don't care what the experts say. I don't care what is happening globally. No fear. 
No fear. Maybe you even have a legitimate case right now that you're dealing with, but no fear. No fear. What the doctor said is a fact, but I, I guarantee you there is the truth of the word that can change the fact of the doctor. Come on now, say amen. What the financial experts may have told you concerning your business is the fact, but the truth of the word of God is going to change that fact. Tell somebody no fear. Very important. Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But make me a small cake from it first. And bring it to me. And afterward make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel. The bean of flour shall not be used up. Nor shall the jar of oil run dry. Until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. She went away and did according to the word of Elijah. Notice the Bible says she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. This is important. She went away and did according to the word of the man of God. Come on now say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, the man of God was speaking by the unction of the Holy Spirit. But notice the Bible says she went away and did according to the word of the man of God. The woman did not hear God. The man heard God. She did not hear God. She had no idea what God told the man of God. She heard the man of God say, this is what God said, and she believed it. Very important. Very important. When a man of God has proved, proved himself for years, he comes to the place where people trust him. Tried and tested. Come on, say amen. amen. Tried and tested. And when he comes and says, Thus saith the Lord, you know, yes, the Lord is speaking. Come on, say amen. amen. Come on now, say amen. amen. Very important. So she went and did according to the word of the man of God. And watch this. I read that again, verse 15. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The bean of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. There are some important highlights that I want to show you in this story. The first thing I want to show you is we, we know that the drought lasted for three years and six months. Because we see that in the book of James chapter 5 verse number 17. The drought lasted for three years and six months. But I, I want you to understand that when something like this happens in the country. You know it's, it's not raining for three years and six months. It is not just within the three years and six months that the people will suffer. Because that's what we know as the ripple effect. I want to say the ripple effect. See, the ripple effect of having no rain for an extended period was massive. It affected, if you notice what's happening right here, it's, 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 it's something that has come against the, the economy of that, of that nation. Can you see that? Because you, you must understand that the, the main national uh, or the source of, of, the, of income of the people of Israel at this time was agriculture. Agriculture. And so, and so the, 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 the main source of income is coming under attack. So this was a major economic crisis. And the rich in the land are beginning to slip into poverty. At this time, I tell you, people's social economic status meant nothing. Everyone was feeling the bite. Because this was at a national scale. I, I remember when the economic crisis uh, started in 2008. I read the story of a man whose net worth was in billions. And in, in, I heard he, he went to bed one night, woke up the next day, and he'd lost everything. Think about with the lockdown that, I mean, things are beginning to open up in so many countries. Unfortunately, some countries still want to lock down. They still have all kinds of 
restrictions and all kinds of rules and regulations. And people are suffering. And people have really suffered. Some people lost their businesses. And these people who lost their businesses may never, ever recover. You understand what I mean by that? They may never recover. See, it was not just something that happened within the space of two years. Yes, it happened within a space of two years. But you've got to think about what it's going to produce. The ripple effect is going to affect people. Many, many may never recover from what happened. And so many small businesses shut down. And these small businesses may never, ever reopen. Never reopen. You see, it is the devil's ultimate plan to impoverish the people. Now, even though with what's happening right here, and what has happened globally, I mean, if you study the history of nations, you see what's happened globally, whether it's in Europe, whether it's in America, whether it's in Africa, you see what has happened globally, but we've got to understand that it is the ultimate plan of the devil to impoverish the people. Yes, man must take responsibility, but it is a spiritual thing. I say it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. The devil is the mastermind of these things that happen. That is the reason why the last two, three years I've always told you that there is something that the devil has done against the church. This is not normal. There is an attack against the church and the church must not bury her head in the sand like an ostrich. Believers must wake up to what is happening in the spirit. This is more spiritual than you know it. It's not just a virus running around. In actual fact, if you do a study, you will discover that more people have died of other stuff than the virus. Don't shout me down. Preaching good. More, some have died of depression. I mean, kids have become suicidal. Marriage is falling apart. Other stuff have actually taken lives than the, the, than, the, than the virus itself. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It is an ultimate, listen, the ultimate plan of the enemy is to wreak havoc in the nations. And if the church cannot come together and pray and push back the tide of the wicked, who is going to do it? Who is going to do it? Show me one institution in the world that can push back the plan of Satan. There is none. They are all under his thumb. The church is the only force. The only restraining force. The church is the only voice that can say to the devil, we are still here. Your plans cannot come to fruition. It's only the church. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the old armor of God that you may be able to withstand. It's the church that can withstand. Come on now, say amen. All other institutions are being really, to be honest with you, you go do your study, you find out all other institutions, there is absolutely nothing they can do to the onslaught of the devil. But the church, Jesus said to us, occupy until I return. The church is to occupy. The church is to say to the devil, you are not going to do anything while we are here. We are here and we are going to take over. We are here and we are going to take new grounds. In actual fact, we're kicking the devil hard and we're kicking, kicking the devil out of the nations of the earth. And how do we do that as we kick the devil out of people's lives? By preaching the gospel. Paul said in Romans 1.16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all of them that believes, to the Jews first and then to the Greek. Come on, my friends. It's our responsibility. Yeah. We're not going to let the devil have his way. Oh, my goodness. Your amen is very weak this morning. Yeah. We are not going to let the devil have his way. We're going to say to hell with the devil. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. To hell with the devil. We're going to preach the gospel. We're going to push back the tide of the wicked. We're going to pray. We're going to resist. We're going to stand firm in faith. We're going to say to the devil, you will not have this nation. Amen. You will not have the people. You will, we, we are going to empty hell and populate heaven. Amen. Oh my goodness. That's what the church must do. So the devil's plan is to impoverish the people. 
Yes, man must take some level of responsibility, but I truly believe it is the ultimate plan of the devil. There is a spirit that's working behind the scenes. And the church must see this. So this thing lasted for three years and six months. That was it, three years? Six months. But then it had ripple effect because, you see, it would take time for them to recover from the devastation that has happened. It would take some time. It would take some time. The second thing that I want you to see in this story. If you notice, the prophet called forth a drought. Now my question is, why did he call forth? A drought. Well, we know the reason is because the nation have been led into a, into a terrible spiritual and moral decline. See, that's the reason why he called for the drought. The nation has been led into sin. The people at this time, the civil leaders at this time, were terrible people. Ahab and Jezebel, his wife. Oh my goodness. If I ask you, maybe the average Bible scholar, if I ask you who the name, uh, who was the wife of King David, you may not know. Who was the wife of King Solomon? You may not know. Who was the wife of King Hezekiah? You may not know. But if I ask you who Jezebel was, I, I, I know you all know who Jezebel was. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, this woman, this woman was so evil, she controlled leadership. That is why when you begin to see control of leadership, that's the spirit of Jezebel at work. Any spirit that tries to control leadership is the spirit of Jezebel at work. In the book of Revelation, she's even referred to as the harlot Jezebel. Who seduces. What a combination. I mean, Ahab gave himself to so much evil. Jezebel was so scheming and conniving. She was such a wicked woman. Controlling her husband and, and having her way and, and telling her husband what to do. And her husband had to listen to her. And basically, she was the one running the show. One day, Jezebel walks into the house. Into the palace, actually. She walked into the palace and she sees Ahab. Ahab was upset. Ahab looked like he's been sucking a lemon. And, and Jezebel said to, to Ahab, what's wrong with you? Why is a countenance like this? And Ahab said, well, I went to Naboth the Jezreelite and I asked him to, to, to sell his vineyard to me. And Naboth said, no, I'm not going to my, sell my vineyard to you. Why? Because it is my inheritance from my fathers so this is not something that i would sell it's priceless okay now watch this watch this ahab wanted to pay for it neighbor said i'm sorry it's priceless this is this is this is family's inheritance i'm not gonna sell it my father gave it to me i'm sure neighbor wanted to give it to his own son do you understand what i'm saying yeah. so he he says, I'm not sad, I'm sorry. We can't reach an agreement, king. So the king was, at this point, he, he was doing the right thing. Was he not? I mean, at least he was negotiating. He was saying, oh, I'll pay for it. Come on, it's close to my palace. I'll pay for it. But because Naboth would not give him the piece of property, he goes back home and he's sulking and he's upset and he's angry. You know, and so Jezebel said, what is that the reason why you look like this? Are you not the king of Israel? Hey, hey, hey. Listen, just go to bed. I'll get it for you. Don't worry. I'll fix this. You know what Jezebel did? She went and spoke to some people and said, hey, let's, let's cook up a plan. And she cooked up a plan and they lied against Naboth. And in actual fact, the Bible says that they killed Naboth. The man did not do anything wrong, but Jezebel walked up a plan, walked up a scheme, and they killed Naboth. And the Bible says the dogs licked up the blood of Naboth on the streets of Israel. So guess what she did? She goes back home and she says to her husband, hey, 
go in and possess. It's all yours. This is how wicked this woman was. Now, Ahab goes into the, to the vineyard of Naboth and he is about to take it and God sends a prophet. Go and tell Ahab that what he's done, it's evil and I'm going to bring judgment upon him. Guess what Ahab did? Ahab heard the judgment that the, 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 the prophet just passed. Guess what he did? He tore his robe and he humbled himself and God said to the prophet, Oh, oh go back and tell, tell Ahab I'm not going to do it in his day because he has humbled himself before me. We can see some level of good in the man, but he had a terrible wife. Who you marry will destroy you or make you. It's going to affect you big time. You, you, listen, this is, this is real life stuff now. Okay, this is real life stuff. Okay? Who you marry will make or mar you. Believe me when I tell you. Because we've seen it. It's all about the Bible and it's in our day and time. Who you marry. Who you marry. Don't be in a hurry. You're rushing, you're going to rush out. The person you marry can become your worst nightmare. People getting all these mushy gushy feelings. I'm telling you right now, be careful. You pray, you pray, you pray, and you pray. And sometimes you see all those red flags. You ignore them. So I love her. I feel goosebumps. I feel butterflies. I'm on cloud nine. Okay, you're going to come down from cloud. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, you've got to be very careful. This is a life and death affair. I kid you not when I tell you. It's a life and death affair. There is life when the right choice is made. And there is death when the wrong choice. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. The end of it is death. That way seems right to the man. It's not right, but to the man it seems right. But the end is death. And God who sees the end from the beginning and everything in the middle keeps warning people. But if they turn a deaf ear to God's instruction, well, the seed you sow will definitely produce a harvest. What a scheming, conniving woman. There are cases where it's the woman. The woman is the problem. And there are cases, oh my God, where the man is the problem. Mostly someone said. There are cases where the man, <laughs> there are cases where the man is the problem. And I'm telling, I'm telling you, children of God, be very, very careful. Go in and possess. It's yours. Now, she messed up this man's life. Yes, of course, the man was open to evil. And that's the reason why he accepted the evil that came from Jezebel. Because if you're not open to evil, you wouldn't have married her in the first place. Jezebel and Ahab, it's a terrible combination. <laughs> you, you don't want them in your church. Come on, I'm preaching good. Say amen. amen. You don't want Ahab in your church. You definitely don't want Jezebel. He said, oh my God, Pastor God, what should we do? Kick Jezebel out. You kick people out of church? Absolutely. We kick some people out of church for the interest of other people. Oh my goodness. You see, in Psalm number 23, notice what it says. Your rod and your staff. Your rod and your staff. A shepherd understands what a rod is used for. And, yet, and also he understands what a staff is used for. You don't use the rod on the sheep. You use the rod on the wolves. Some are wolf in sheep clothing. You beat them away. Get! 
No, really, when people are willing to make the adjustment, then we can help. But when they are not willing to make the adjustment and they're just going to give in to the enemy and just cause trouble and, and, and just walk the works of the flesh and just be stubborn and would not yield to the conviction of the Holy Spirit, oh my goodness, at some point you're going to say, I'm sorry, that's the door. Don't let it hit you where the good Lord split you. No, really, at some point you have to say, I'm we." This is not, it's not going to work. So be careful. Tell your neighbor, be careful. Be careful. No, really, be careful. Be careful who, because who you associate with will affect you. Yeah. The Bible says, can two walk together without agreement? Can two walk together without agreement? You cannot work with someone that does not agree with you. So there must be some level of agreement between Ahab and Jezebel. That's the reason why they had this connection going. So here we're looking at, at a terrible civil leadership. No wonder they were confronted by spiritual leadership. Because see, Elijah was the spiritual leader of the land. Come on, say amen. So we see a confrontation. I want to say confrontation. Elijah was not scared. You want to be a leader in the church? You cannot have a weak spine. You've got to be tough. And I'm talking about tough love. Tough love. You've got to be tough. You've got to be tough because, see, when we say tough love, of course you want to love on the people and make sure you nurture the people and you help the people. But you, you also want to look at the much bigger picture. There is a bigger picture. I want to say to each of you, this whole thing is not revolving around you. It's a big, there's a bigger picture. Tell somebody there's a bigger picture. No, it's not just about you. It's a bigger picture. Come on now, say amen. amen. And so this whole nation is led into a life of sin and, and decay and and on unrighteousness and injustice was running rampant and when listen to what i'm about to tell you if sin runs rampant in the life of a believer in christ drought will happen listen to what i'm telling you you open the door to the enemy and the devil will come and mess up things the bible says in psalm 91 he that dwelleth he in the secret place of the most high shall abide under god's protection under the shadow of the Almighty. You don't want to open the door. You want to keep the door shut. Come on now say amen. amen. The Bible says be sober, be vigilant for your adversary. The devil like a roaring lion. Walking about looking for whom he might destroy. I tell you who is looking for. You and I. He's not looking for unbelievers. He's got them already. But he's looking for you. You that once... Lived in his camp, but you decamped. You came out of his camp and you moved position. And now you are a child of God. You live in the camp of God. And now you fight the works of darkness. You're casting out devils. You're living a life of holiness and righteousness. You are the target. The, 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 the unbelievers out there are not the target. You are the target. You're a child of God and you have become the target of the wicked. That's what the Bible says. Be sober, be vigilant for your adversary. The word adversary is the word for opponent. Your opponent, your adversary, your enemy. The one that, you know, an opponent that wants to fight you all the time. This adversary is like a roaring lion. Looking for whom to destroy all over the place. And you and I are the ones that's looking for. That is why we must stay on top of our spiritual game. No, don't let your God down. My son, protect your heart. Protect your heart. Keep your heart clean. Keep your heart. Keep your heart by keeping the word of God in you. Don't open the door to the lies of the devil. Because the devil will come to lie to you. And when the devil lies to you and you believe the lie of the devil, guess what happens? He gains access into your life and then he begins to try to wreak havoc. The devil will not wreak havoc. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The third thing I want to show you is the prophet gave them the word of the Lord. The prophet did not give them popular opinion. Very important. See, the office of a prophet, listen, or any minister of 
the gospel for that matter is a tough one sometimes. Because God will reveal to you things about people that you have to deal with. People say, God, I want you to use me in the revelation gifts of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand the enormity? Do you understand the responsibility? I kid you not when I tell you this with all of my heart, I tell you. There are things I've seen some, over the years about some people. And sometimes, really, I, I did not verbalize this, but in me, I was just saying, God, why are you showing me this stuff? I don't want to see I repented, but I said, Lord, I don't want to see this stuff about people. Because I see stuff about people. And I'm, I'm not here to claim, I'm not claiming to be a prophet, but I tell you, I see things about people. I see things about, the Lord opens my eyes and I see, and I must say I'm a prophet, but I tell you, I, there is a prophetic on me. I see. I see. I, I, I look at people sometimes and I can tell. I just take a look at them and I can tell what I can tell. And the, the, sometimes it's in, the, it's in dreams. I, I wake up 2 a.m. and, and I'm, I'm nudging on my wife. I had a dream. I had a dream. What is it about? I tell her, I go back to sleep. I mean, I can see faces. I can see situations. I can see what people are involved in. I can see what people are doing. And one of the toughest things that I've had to deal with is how do I go to them and tell them? Because I've discovered some people like to lie. Some Christians, no, really, I kid you not. You go to them, you say, hey, hey, hey come, I want to I talk. I want to talk to you. Yesterday night, this is what I saw. And is this going on in your life? Um... No, it's not. Okay. Now, here is the problem when they say it's not going on. Now, someone is lying. Is it God? You see, somebody is lying. You, you understand what I'm saying? Is it God? No. Why did you say no? <laughs> is it, no, is it God? Or maybe I ate too much pizza. Before I went to bed and I saw, <laughs> or maybe, maybe, no, really, maybe I had I had too much pizza. It was, there was a lot of pepperoni on the pizza. <laughs> and so I went to bed and I began to see this pizza revelation. No, maybe, maybe I'm the one lying. Maybe, maybe, because it cannot be God. The Bible says, let every man be a liar, but let God remain true. So God, yeah, you're absolutely correct. God is not the one lying. Somebody is lying. Maybe I did not see well. Maybe I ate too much fufu before I went to bed and I'm dreaming fufu vision. There's a reason why I'm seeing what I'm seeing. And God is not the, re the problem. It's me or you. And we're going to sort this thing out. <laughs> no, honestly. But, but I, 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 I tell you with, with, with all honesty and I kid you not. When God says, I know. When it's from God, I know it's from God. I, I so know it is from God. I, I, know, I know it is God. You see, it is, there is a knowing. There is such a knowing in your knower. You know God is speaking. You know they are in that. Th you know they are doing it. They can say no all they want. You know it. There is something going on. Now why am I telling this? Because that is what we see in, in the ministry of prophet Elijah. Elijah had to go to them and give them the word of the Lord, not what they wanted to hear. The office of the prophet, it's not to just tell you what you want to hear. The office of the prophet is to tell you the word of the Lord. And a man of God that cannot tell you the word of the Lord does not have right to speak over your life. That is the reason why where you worship matters a lot. It will affect your eternity. It will affect whether you make it to heaven. I tell you this, it will affect you. Because we live in the last days where people are heaping up teachers that will tickle their ears and tell them what they want to hear. But no, we shall preach the word in season and out of season. We shall rebuke and reprove and exhort. 
Have you noticed that two thirds of preaching is not exhortation, it is rebuke and reproof? You go to some places, oh my goodness, it is like, it's like, it's exhortation, exhortation, ex I'm not against exhortation, I do exhortation a lot. And I'm sure the, this word is exhorting you. <laughs> no, really. One, one of the things I've learned to do is to make sure I have a perfect blend. I want to say perfect blend. I don't want to push one too much and leave the other. I want to have a perfect blend. There's got to be a perfect blend. There is exhortation. There is reproof. There is rebuke. There is correction. Come on now, say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. It's important. It's not, it's not a motivational speaking all the time. Come on now. We, we are not here to motivate you. We're here to preach the gospel. I'm sure Jesus was not going about motivating people. Jesus was going about preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And yes, along with that comes motivation. Come on, say amen. People get encouraged. People get happy. People get blessed. Absolutely. Paul, the apostle, went up around preaching the gospel. But notice, he, he, he did not get a lot of likes. Like you get on Facebook. <laughs> no, really, he did not get a lot of likes. Oh, they didn't like my post on Facebook. Now, Paul didn't get a lot of likes. Paul got a lot of beating. Beating with rods, stoned, and left for dead. That's what he got in most places. Here in Turkey, he was all over this place. In Galatia, in Ephesus. He was in Greece, preaching at Corinth. It was not that good. Come on now, say amen. amen. Praise God. So he didn't get a lot of Facebook likes. At the time, there was no Facebook. He didn't get a lot of, you know, likes on Instagram. Or heart on Instagram. I love your post. <laughs> you know, there is this thing people say, you know, ministers, some ministers say, go where you're celebrated. You, you, are you serious? Go where you're celebrated? Some people don't even celebrate some people. You know what I mean? Go where you're celebrated. So if they don't celebrate you, you will not take the gospel to them. Now, if Jesus went where he was celebrated, he wouldn't have come. Because the Bible says, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, the just for the unjust. He did not deserve it, but he did it anyways. Come on now, say amen. amen. Praise God. He came into Nazareth where he was raised up. The Bible says, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue and he handed him the scroll. And he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord's upon me. For he anointed me to preach the gospel of the poor. And he read all of that according to Isaiah chapter number 60. Right? <laughs> he read all of that. And the Bible, no, Isaiah 61, I'm sorry. And he read all of that. And the Bible says he sat down and gave the, 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 the scroll back to the minister. And he sat down and he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes. And the Bible says they took him and they wanted to throw him off the cliff. Go where you're celebrated. So a preacher must, must have the backbone to tell the truth. And the fact that it is popular opinion does not mean it is God's opinion. Write that down. Put it on Instagram. <laughs> Popular opinion is not God's opinion most of the time. God's opinion is righteousness. God's opinion is justice. God's opinion is holiness. Come on, say amen. amen. God has his own way. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55, God says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts higher than your thoughts. What does that mean? That means we can step up and take on the way God thinks. And take on the way God sees. And take on the way God lives. Because we can live the life. Because the, the DNA of God is on the inside of each believer. Amen. Come on now. Can someone give the Lord a big hand of praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. The next thing I want you to see, the fourth thing I want you to see in the story is in the midst of the crisis, God makes a way for his man. Oh, I want to tell you this morning or this afternoon, this is where exhortation comes in right now. No matter what's happening globally, God will make a way for you. Amen. Oh, that amen needs prayer this morning. I said, no matter what's happening globally, God will make a way for you. Amen. God will make a way where there is no way. 
the world might be going down, but the Bible says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. And the, 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 the glory of God is risen upon you. Darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness shall cover the people. But upon you, a child of God, the, the glory of God is risen. I tell you, you are blessed. You will walk in the glory and the power of God in these last days. The enemy will have nothing on you. You will walk in victory. You will walk in absolute dominion. Come on now, somebody shout hallelujah. God is on your side. Favor is on your side. Power is on your side. Glory is on your side. God's goodness is with you. And when God opens a door, no man can shut that door. When God shuts the door, no man can open that door. God has given you dominion over the nations of the earth. Come on now, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. You are like a tree planted by the river of waters, bringing forth its fruit in its season. Whose leaves also shall not fade. And whatever you do will prosper. Come on now, somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says I will look up to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow my foot to be moved. He that keeps me does not slumber. Behold he that keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade at my right hand. The sun will not smite me by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve your going out and your coming in from this day forward and forevermore. Come on now somebody shout hallelujah. He that dwelleth in the sacred place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him i trust come on now say amen, amen. hallelujah the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restored my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. For thou art with me, that rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me right in the presence of mine enemies. Oh my God, my enemies are getting upset. They are foaming in the mouth. But I'm eating the goodies of God that's placed upon the table come on now somebody shout hallelujah it does not it does not matter what's happening globally the hand of God is upon you the goodness of God is upon you the wisdom of God is in you the grace of God is working in your favor oh my goodness this is going to be the best week you've ever known when you step out today and when you step out on Monday and when you step out on Tuesday and when you step out on Wednesday and when you step out on Thursday and when you step out on Friday and when you step out on, on Saturday they shall roll out a red carpet right before you you shall see see the hand of God you shall see the favor of God you shall see the goodness of God and people shall want to hold back from you but they would say no I cannot there is something causing me to bless you I don't know who you are but I feel like giving it to you I don't know who you are but I feel like opening the door wide open before you come on now say amen, amen. Thus saith the Lord unto his anointed, unto Cyrus, whose right hand I've held to subdue nations before him. I'll go before you and I'll make the crooked places straight. I'll break in pieces the gates of bronze. I will cut in sunder the bars of iron. I will give unto you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. God is about to bless you like you've never known. God's about to increase you like you've never known. God's about to expand you like you've never known. Everything that has held you bound I command them in the name of Jesus they come off in Jesus mighty name all the works of the devil against your life against your future against your destiny against your family against your business in the name that's above every other name I command them to remove and return back from where they came in the mighty name of Jesus come on if you believe it put those hands together and give the Lord a big shout ha! hallelujah Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise the Lord. Praise Him for one minute. Praise Him for one minute. 60 seconds. For 60 seconds. For 60, only 60 seconds. Lift up your hands and put them together. And shout to the Lord a shout of victory. 60 seconds. Hallelujah. Ah, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ha, 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 ha. Yay. Ha, ha.
The devil thinks he's got this in the bag. The devil thinks that you're finished. But I'm here to announce to you that it's only the beginning of the goodness of God that shall be revealed upon your life. I'm here to announce to you that God is good. I'm here to announce to you that you're about to experience the favor of God. You're about to experience the power of God working in and through you. You're about to experience God's goodness like you've never known. Because God is with you. God is on your side. I don't care what the devil plans. God is with you. And the Bible says you have overcome them little children. For greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. If you have faith in the house, then one more time. Lift up your hands and put them together. And give God all the glory and all the praise in the house this afternoon. Hallelujah. Go ahead and take your seat. God bless you. So God spoke to the man of God about a place. A place of commended blessing. The brook Cherith was the place. He had to be in, the, he had to be in perfect sync with God. You see, he, 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 he must... He, 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 he must hear God. Very important. Listen, to hear God's voice in these last days is not a luxury. It's a necessity. And when you can hear God's voice, you're going to walk through big doors. Get ready to walk through massive doors. Get, get ready to, to go into places and into relationships you never even thought possible. By the voice of God, as the voice of God will come to you, and the voice of the Lord will say unto you, this is what must be done. And then you wake up and, and you try to think about it. Your mind cannot compute it. Because it is too big for your mind. God tells you to do things bigger than you. Amen. Bigger than your mind. Why? Because it's so supernatural. It's not something you can handle just in the natural. And so you will need to depend on this big God who gives you this big idea to bring this big thing to fruition. Get ready, the voice of God. And so the voice of the Lord came to Elijah. And the voice of the Lord said, go to the brook Cherith. Because I've commanded the ravens to feed you there. Now, I want you to see something about the ravens. The ravens, the ravens are carnivorous birds. And they are very selfish birds. And God used selfish birds to take care of his man. While others were starving and others were suffering, God's man was catered for. God's going to cater for you. See, God's going <laughs> to, oh my God, God's going to cater. God is going to take, oh my goodness, someone said, Pastor God, well, you don't understand. This is the last cash in my pocket. I'm here to tell you, just like Elijah told the woman, the jar of oil will not run out. The flower will not run out until God brings back rain. I'm here to prophesy to somebody, what you have in your hands now is not running out. It's not going to run out. It will continue to increase until excess is poured out upon you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Watch this. Number five, unexpected streams of income unexpected streams of supply elijah goes to the brook and he is fed by ravens now the water dries up because there was no rain of course the reservoirs would dry up when there is no rain god came to him again and said now go to zarephath I want you to get ready because God is going to bring people into your life. Amen. Oh, that amen is sweet. God's going to bring people. God will bring some relationships into your life in 2022. Amen. These, <laughs> these relationships, I mean, when they begin to happen, you will be shocked. You will be surprised from out of the blues comes this phone call. It comes to you and from out of the blues comes this opportunity. It comes to you from out of the blues comes this thing you were not even thinking was possible. But my Bible tells me that God's able to do exceedingly abundantly above. Hallelujah. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. You see, God does not just do what you ask or think. God would do exceedingly abundantly above. 
You see, when it's exceedingly abundantly above, then it is coming from God. God wants to do more. God wants to give you more. God wants to expand your capacity. God wants to bring in the right relationships and get ready because in 2022, there will be some relationships that will come to you and you will know when they come that these relationships are divine connections. They come from God. You couldn't have got them in your own wisdom, in your own education, in your own ability. They will come by the Lord and from the Lord and when they come you will know this is from God and that relationship will take your life to a whole new place it will take your business, it will take your ministry it will take your everything that you've been doing so far will go to a whole new place come on now I want to prophesy I see I see tenfold increase coming upon your life I see I see twentyfold in, oh my goodness I see twentyfold increase coming upon your life for some people I see a double whatever you've done so far I prophesy it is doubled in the name of Jesus. You're going to see a double. You're going to see increase. Even in that area of your life, it's going to so increase because of the kind of people that God will bring into your life. If you believe it, shout your loudest. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, get ready for surprises. From the most unexpected people. raven feeding you who will think about that but God will use the foolish things of this world to confound ah, God will use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise God's going to show you that he is God he rules in the affairs of men praise the Lord Get ready. Amen. Something big is about to, ha to happen. A, it's upon us. It's upon us. It's upon us. Oh, I'm not even talking about, I'm not even talking about next year. I'm talking about this year. I'm talking about, I'm talking about this year you run with blessings. Not, not, not helter skelter. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about this year doing big things. Come on now, shout hallelujah. I'm talking about new opportunities, new, new doors opening up to you. Come on now, say amen. People, pe people want to say yes. They want to say yes. They, they cannot say no because they, the hand of the Lord will grab them. The hand of the Lord will grab their vocal cord. And the hand of the Lord will grab their tongue. And, and, and yes, uh, that, that job opportunity will come. Come on now, say amen. That business, that business proposition will come. Come on now, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on now, somebody is about to go to new levels even from today. Somebody is about to experience something big, something awesome, something mighty is about to be unleashed. Come on now, it's even happening right now. If you will lift up your two hands and begin to receive right now that which God is doing by His Spirit in this place today. You, you are not going to leave this place like you came. Hallelujah. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon you because he trusted in thee and because you trust in the Lord. The peace of God, nothing missing, nothing broken. It's upon you. You come into new places. You come into new territories. You take over new grounds by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. All the stuff that has held you bound, all the stuff, stuff that have hindered you in the name of Jesus, they stop you no more. They are broken up in Jesus mighty name Amen. I want to read this last scripture and I'll, I'll, I'll close Isaiah 54 verse number 10 it says for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed but my kindness shall not depart from you nor shall my covenant of peace be removed there is a covenant of peace hey 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 you know, you, 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 you hear people talk about peace and they, they, they just talk about peace in the realm of the soul. L listen, the peace that God gives, it's not just peace in the soulish realm. Shalom is not peace in the realm of the soul. Shalom is nothing missing, nothing broken. That's the life God has for you. Amen. Nothing. Tell somebody nothing missing. Nothing, nothing missing. broken. Nothing tell your neighbor. Say shalom to your neighbor. Shalom. Yeah. 
That's what it means. Nothing, it, it's not just a mental state. Pastor God will lay your hands upon my head so that I have peace. Listen, that's just, <laughs> listen, that, <laughs> that kind of peace comes and goes. That kind of peace is determined by the circumstance you find yourself. But there is a peace on the inside. The peace that Jesus had when he said to the disciples, come on, let's go over to the other side. And, and uh, on their way, this massive storm broke out. And Jesus, the Bible says he was in the boat with a pillow sleeping. What? Pillow? Yeah, pillow sleeping. Disciples were freaking out. They, they were panicking. What are we going to do? We're going to die. The prince of peace was in the boat. How can you die when the one who, who commands the elements and they obey is with you? How can you die when he peace is with you? Nothing missing, nothing broken. It's right in the middle of the boat. And then here you are bailing water. You know what those guys should have done? They, they went down there, they saw Jesus sleeping. They would have just joined him. <laughs> Let's all sleep. You know, some of you need to go to sleep. Some of, you, some of you are so, some of you, you, you've got your hands on the whole thing and that's why you're not seeing the breakthrough. You need to go to sleep. Take your hands off and let God do what he does. Amen. Tell your neighbor, take your hands off. Amen. Go to sleep. <laughs> go to sleep. Tell your neighbor, it's time to go to sleep. Some of you don't, are not, some of you are not saying it. And what you, some of you are not, some of you would not say anything. It's time to go to sleep. It's time to take your hands off. You're freaking out and you, you, oh, what am I going to do? Take your hands off. Now, that does not mean irres irresponsibility. That's not irresponsibility. That is turning it over to God. Jesus was sleeping. And, and they came and said, Master, do you not care that we die? Who told you you're dying? Wh whose report? <laughs> whose report? Whose report are you listening to? <laughs> Who said you're dying? Life is here. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he dies, yet he shall live. And he that is alive and believes shall never see death. Oh, that's what he said. Yeah. That's what he said to Miriam Martha. Come on now, say amen. amen. We're dying. No, you're not dying. Let God be the one that determines what's happening. Amen. And how do you know God is the one? You go to his word. What does his word say? What does his word say about where you find yourself? What does his word say about the situation? His word says you are more than a conqueror. His word says you shall see the goodness of God in the land of the living, not in the land of the dead. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Tell somebody no fear. No fear. No fear. You see, fear, false evidence appearing real. That's the acronym. F-E-A-R. False evidence appearing real. The smoke screen. It's a smoke screen. It's a facade. It's false. God is on your side. Amen. God is with you. Amen. Come on now, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. How many of you believe this is going to be the best week you've ever known? This is, this, is go <laughs> this is going to be the best week. I tell you, I decree, I declare over you. This is going to be the best week you have ever known in your entire life. Amen. Next week will be better. Amen. But let's deal with this one first. Amen. Come on now, give the Lord a big hand of praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah.